And now for the Spaniard that blighted my life, Jack Benny. Oh, Jack. Jack. Oh, Jack. Oh, Don, I forgot to tell you, Jack just called up and said he'd be a few minutes late. He's taking a taxi right over. Oh, then I better tell Bester to play another number. Well, why don't you tell a few jokes, Don? Oh, I don't know any, Mary. Why don't you tell one? Well, the only one I know is the one about the goat without a nose. And you know how that smells. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what. Let's tune in on a few taxi cabs and see if we can find Jack. That's a good idea. Taxi, mister? Yes, quick, I'm late. <laughs> sure thing. You know, this is a radio cab. I not only take you where you want to go, but I give you entertainment besides. Yeah, that's nice, but hurry up. Yeah, where you're going and what program do you want to hear? 6th Avenue and 49th Street and the Rise of the Goldberg. Okay, Chief. Say, what kind of a cab is this, anyway? 15 and 5. 15 for the ride and 5 for the Goldberg. <laughs> <laughs> I can see you weren't always a taxi driver. No, I used to be a master of ceremony. Did you ever hear the one about the peacock? No. It's a wonderful tale. <laughs> <laughs> there always was. And don't pull any of those jokes. You know, I'm a master of ceremonies myself. Oh, yeah? Well, why ain't you driving a cab? <laughs> Say, driver, just watch that road ahead of you, will you? Hey, don't worry about me. I've hit over a hundred pedestrians on the right one mark on this cab. Well, that's good. Come on, step on it. I'm late now. Hey, hey, what's the big idea? Eh, that streetcar won't get over. No, it won't, eh? Well, you'll have the same trouble with the Empire State Building. Take it easy. Well, can you imagine that? I can't beat that red light. <laughs> Isn't that too bad? Hey, bud, you've only gone three blocks and the meter reads 60 cents. What's the idea? Well, you see, you're the first customer today, and the meter's jumping for joy. <laughs> That's good. Some fun. Go ahead. There's the whistle. That doggone it. She stalled again, and I can't stand it. Can you imagine that? Yeah, in fact, I'd have bet on it. <laughs> you say, when you're as old as this cab, you'll stall once in a while, too. Oh, there she is. Hey, you better step on it, buddy, or my program will be over before I get there. All right, kid, I'll have you there in a minute. Uh-oh, the cop. I'll never get to the studio now. Fine mess. A rough-looking guy, too. Here he comes. Say, hey, where do you think you're going? Hey, you'll have to talk to this guy in the cab, officer. He's in a hurry, not me. <laughs> Uh, anything wrong, officer? Do you know you were going 60 miles an hour? No. Yes. And don't you know that the speed limit is 25? No. Yes. <laughs> you realize that I'm Jack Benny, the radio comedian? No. Yes. <laughs> well, you just love our new courthouse. Hmm. Here, take this. What's that? It's your ticket. No! Yes! <laughs> oh, but seriously, officer, I'm in a hurry. You know, I have to broadcast tonight. Now, wait a minute. As man to man, didn't you see that red light up there? No. Didn't you hear me blow a whistle? No. Didn't you see me at all? No, a thousand times no. <laughs> Oh, well, then I'm just a failure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you ought to be in pictures. And goodbye, officer. Goodbye. goodbye. You better speed up now, bud. I got to get to the studio. Okay, Chief. Say, were we going 60? It didn't seem like 60 to me. Well, I got those general blow-up proof tires on, Chief. They ride like cushions. Yeah, it won't help you. Ten cents is all I ever tip. <laughs> Here we are. This is it. How much? Three dollars and ten cents. Yeah, here's seventy cents. Yeah, yeah, that's that's what I meant. <laughs> Gee, I hope I'm not too late. Hello, Jack. Hello, 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 fellas. Everybody here? Yeah, we're all here. Okay, play, Don. Uh, that was uh, that was.
are Steve or Two from No No Nanette, played by Don Bester and his Fiddlers Three, his Drummers One, and his Saxophones Twenty. <laughs> oh boy, am I lukewarm tonight. Huh? But I'm glad I got here in time to hear that last number. You've got some great men there, Don, really, but confidentially, you know, I don't care for that cello player. You know? Who? That cello player. You're wrong, Jack, because there's one fellow who knows his onion. I know that, but he should learn something about a cello, too. <laughs> I mean, it's none of my business, you know, but say, Don, that fiddle player you got there, I mean, do you like him? Yeah, very much, Jack. Well, maybe I'm wrong. Uh, what's his name? Hyphus. Oh, it must be me, I guess. I think. <laughs> well, anyway, tonight, folks, we have a thrilling... Say, Jack. Oh, there you are, Wilson. Where were you tonight? Oh, I was a little late. I dropped in to see a picture, and you should have been there, Don. You'd have cried your eyes out. Oh, why? Was it that sad? No, the picture was all right, but a fella came out and sang Wagon Wheels, and I know how you like general tires, you know. <laughs> You'd have cried your eyes out. Well, I saw a picture this afternoon, and I really did cry. Yeah, what picture was that? Wild Garbo. That's Wild Cargo. There's nothing to cry about. <laughs> nothing to cry about in that picture. There isn't. Imagine paying 75 cents in the balcony at a matinee. Oh, I see. Anything over 10 cents is dramatic to Wilson, you know? <laughs> Which reminds me, folks, I read in the paper today where Harry Lauder is swimming over for another tour of America. <laughs> you reminded me of that, Wilson. Huh? <laughs> now, say, Jack, mm -hmm. I hear you're going out to Hollywood next week to make a picture. Yes, Bester, who told you? No, well, I saw it in the papers. Uh, how do you think you do in pictures, Jack? Oh, all right. I, I don't know. I guess I ought to be as good as William Powell or Clark Gable. I mean, there's really no difference between us. <laughs> Of course, William Powell has a nice mustache. Well, I can raise one in three days. I mean, that's nothing. You know? And then uh, look at Clark Gable. He has a cute dimple in his cheek. Oh, well, that's easy. I can have three of my side teeth pulled out. That'll help. <laughs> Gee, Jack, I think you'll just be swell in pictures. Do you really think so, Mary? Sure, there's always room for another Boris Karloff. <laughs> But I'm not a Karloff, Mary. No, but you're certainly Boris. <laughs> oh, is that all? Who wrote that? Listen, Mary. What I... <laughs> Mary, what I haven't got for pictures, I can borrow. You know that. Sir. What do you mean? Well, if I play a Napoleon part, I can borrow a uniform. If I play a Tarzan part, I can borrow a leopard skin. How about sex appeal? That's the only thing I'm worried about, you know? <laughs> Say, but what has sex appeal got to do with it, Mary? You love me, don't you? Yes, but do I know what I'm doing? Play, Don. <laughs> I'm going to look in the mirror. Believe me. <laughs> that, was, um, that was Frank Parker singing May I from the motion picture We're Not Dressing. Now, let me tell you something, folks. Frank sings with the same quality that a certain tire has, which I don't like to mention on this program. But as a slight hint, you all remember what rank Pershing held in the Army. So just put tire on the end of that. You get the idea. <laughs> Listen, Parker, your voice is getting better, and to tell you the truth, I'd sooner hear you sing than Don Bester any time. <laughs> uh, I'll bet you say that to all the singers. All right, stick to your singing. Huh? <laughs> Say, Jack, mm -hmm. you just made a personal appearance at the Capitol Theater, didn't you? Yes, Frank, I was there for two weeks. And I hate to boast, but the theater was jammed. Standing room only. Were you in to see me? No, I went home and got a seat. Oh, well, I don't blame you. You know, Frank, Mary was at the Capitol with me. I didn't know that. Were you a big hit, Mary? Colossal. Well, that's fine. I'm glad to hear it. Jack, what does colossal mean? Well, colossal... Colossal means, uh, uh, give me that dictionary minute there, will you, Frank? Yeah, here it is. Let's see, uh, colossal, colossal, K-O-L, <laughs> K-O-L-O, colossal, gee, it isn't even here. <laughs> I, I, I guess there's no such word. Huh? What dictionary is that? Webster's. Oh, well, he makes a lot of mistakes. Yeah. <laughs> Well, anyway, Frank, we both played the Capitol Theater. You know? We had a lot of fun, though, didn't we, Jack? We sure did, Mary. <laughs> Remember the night you sang Smoke Gets in Your Eyes and the fella hit you in the nose with a grapefruit? <laughs> yeah, well, what are you laughing at? Squirt got in your eyes. 
Say, Frank. Yes, Jack. Let me straighten you out on this. You know the fellow that threw that gun on me? Well, I paid him to do it just to get a laugh out of the audience. See? Oh, yeah? Well, what about the other two guys that were throwing at you? Well, they were freelancing. I had nothing to do with that. <laughs> Let's drop it, Mary. Frank, where were we on the program before we started to talk about the Capitol? Huh? Uh, page eight. You said you liked my singing. Oh, yes. Here, I got it. Uh, <laughs> you, uh, you certainly are a great singer. Say, Jack, that reminds me. You know, my folks are very fond of you, but they feel slighted that you went to Don Bester's house and Don Wilson's, and you never paid us a visit. Oh, I'm sorry, Frank. Well, they asked me to bring you over tonight, Jack, and I've got to do it. Oh, no, Frank. No, wait. I went to Wilson's house last week and had to move a piano all around the room, you know? That was a fine rest for me, moving pianos. Well, you won't have, you won't have to worry about that. There won't be any trouble about that, Jack. We have no piano. Well, that's something. Uh... We have an organ. <laughs> well, I'm not going to push any organs around either. Why don't you go, Jack? It might be a mouth organ. Oh, that's right. Huh? Where do you live, Frank? Right down here in Greenwich Village. Oh, you mean the artist colony where all those painters, poets, and singers live? Yes, my family are all singers. Hmm. My father was a famous baritone, and my mother was a soprano with the Metropolitan Opera Company. She was? Well, does she know uh, Lucia de Lamamour? No, we just moved in last week. Oh, uh, <laughs> I wouldn't expect that. Uh, well, Jack, how about it? You know, my folks would sure like to meet you and Mary, too. Well, I, uh... Aw, oh, come on, Jack. What can we lose? Say, can we take Don Wilson along? No, he eats too much. <laughs> yes, especially when he's a guest, yeah. Yeah. Well, come on, Jack. Let's go. It's getting late anyway. Okay. Say, Bester. Yes, Jack. Uh, take care of the rest of this program, will you? I'm going over to Parker's house to meet, to meet his folks. Where? Over to Frank Parker's house. <laughs> hey, what are you laughing at? Oh, nothing, Jack. I, I was there last Tuesday night. Good luck to you. Hey, wait a minute, Don. I don't like the way you said that. Huh? Listen, don't you think I ought to go? I'm not saying a thing, Jack. You'll find out. Say, boys, <laughs> Jack's going over to Parker's house tonight. <laughs> well, come on, Jack. Let's go. Okay, Frank. Come on, Mary. Gee, play, Don. <laughs> Yep, this is it. Uh, how much is a driver? Three dollars and ten cents. Oh, the same guy, eh? Here's seventy cents for you. Yeah, that's what I meant. It's funny I never can think of that number. <laughs> uh, so this is the place, eh? Quite an old house, isn't it, Frank? Yeah? Yes, but it's nice inside. You know, artistic environment and everything. I bet the rent's cheap too. What a dump! <laughs> Quiet, Mary. Well, let's go up. The folks are all waiting. Is this the apartment, Frank? No, that's a Chinese laundry. We're one flight up. Oh, I saw a sign, Sing Fat. I thought it was your place, you know what I mean? <laughs> mm. Sounds like all the folks are at home. Huh? Well, here we are. Now, right this way into the parlor. Hmm. Nice place you have, Frank. Gee, it's swell up here. Oh, whose picture's that on the wall? Why, that's Caruso. Remember him? Oh, sure. Robinson Caruso. Oh, <laughs> uh, you can't fool Mary. Huh? Now, just make yourselves at home, and I'll call the folks in. Okay, Frank. What are they doing now? Oh, just practicing our pet Joe's. Oh, you mean the scale? Yes. Nuts, notes to you. Notes to you, too. <laughs> now, that's too good... Come here to be insulted. Fine. Have to insult me on a program, huh? Come into the next room, Jack. I want you to meet my father. Sure. Sure, Parker. Where's your father? Tipo, tipo, signore. Uh, father. Signor. Father. Father, I want you to meet Jack Benny. Don't bother me, son. Signore. It's all right, Frank. It's all right. No hurry. Father. Father, this is Jack Benny. Oh. Lord on a mobile. How do you feel today? So you're Jack Benny. And this is Mary. I get in the more I am glad to know you. Let's play pinochle. A nickel, a hundred, and the cars are all right, too. Oh, oh, oh. The cars are all right here. 
That was The Cards Are All Right Here by Frank Parker Sr. and Jr. Jack, ask him if he knows Lazy Mary when you get up. <laughs> oh, wait, here comes Mother. Mother, this is Jack Benny and Mary Livingston. Ah, good evening, Mrs. Parker. <laughs> I'm feeling fine, but who can tell? I'm looking good and feeling swell. I'm eating well, but who can tell? <laughs> nice place you got, Frank. Well, Mary, how do you like Mother's rain? I like her whole kitchen. <laughs> you know, Parker, your mother looks fine, but your dad doesn't look so well. Do you? Well, Dad's leading a false life. Hmm. Hello, Frank. Hello, James. Oh, Jack, I want you to meet my sister, Jane. Jane, this is Jack Benny and Mary Livingston. How do you do? <laughs> what is this, anyway? With a hey, nutty, nutty, and a hot shot, shot. <laughs> For heaven's sake, Frank, what was that? Huh? Well, she's the, you know, she's the black cheapest of the family. Oh. She works in a nightclub. Oh, Jack, look at that pretty bird. Yes, yes that's, that's, a, that's our singer canary, Jack, and what a singer. Come on, sing something, Primal. Oh, Primal Canary. Oh, I, knew, I knew I saw that bird somewhere. You know, that little bird listens into all of our programs. Well, isn't that nice? Primal, what do you think of our announcer, Don Wilson? <laughs> you said it. <laughs> yeah? Our uh, resent, says. Frank, turn off that radio. Oh, look, Jack, they even have a singer sewing machine. Mary, it's the general tire program. Oh. <laughs> I imagine you folks must be very hungry. Would you like something to eat? Yes, 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 yes. Me too. I think we have some marble cake. Hamburger I'd rather move cannons. Say, hey, Jack, would you like some of that? No. I'd like some chili and some beans. Da, da, da. This is the silliest program we've ever had. <laughs> Well, we've got some. Oh, Hungarian Rhapsody. I'll have some of that. Well done. What do you want, Mary? I'll have some Mendelssohn spring sauce. That song, Mary. Oh, order your own meal. Pinky, take care of the guests. Now, listen, let's have some fun while we're waiting. How about the radio? Let's tune in on the radio again. and hear the General Tire show. The show, the show, the show. That's right, Mr. Parker. Tune in and see what our boys are doing. The General Tire train is bold in everything. I know it. I know it. And it is bold. Turn off that radio. Oh, I will have to go. Come on, Mary. Come on. I think we'll go anyway. I've had enough of this joint. Me too. Goodbye. Goodbye, Mrs. Parker. Goodbye. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye forever. That's all I want to know. Play, Don. <laughs>